Okay, everyone, welcome back to today's dev stream. I'm just gonna set up the restream and watch me work, as per usual, while this intro song plays. Stream and watch me work, as per usual, while this You know, something that makes me a little sad is that I just realized that the music I've been playing the last few streams has not even been captured by OBS. So there's, there's definitely some, some things for me to figure out with OBS still. Okay, let's break out this chat. Setting up my stream. Just chatting with someone to watch me work. I already got paired today with another, uh, another artist or creator. Okay, let us proceed back to Unreal Engine 4. Uh, last stream, which was yesterday, we were working on gamepad controls for the, uh, for the menus. So what we did was set up gamepad controls for the, the main pause menu. It was pretty simple. And then we began work on the player select menu, I think. Or I worked on that after the stream. Either way, I finished working on the player select menu with the gamepad. And take a look at it here. Added a few more touches with, uh, you know, some text for each character that comes in. Uh, and when you select one, you get your cancel or confirm. And if you confirm, it uh, you know plays a different confirmation noise, swaps the animation, or sorry, swaps the avatar. So it's like kind of like a like a ready posed avatar, so to speak. But yeah, we built out this um, navigation for the gamepad on the main menu. Um, I want to proceed to switch this into a fully fully controllable menu from the gamepad because initially it's only been from the mouse and keyboard um so let's continue um i want to work in the status menu let's see here that is not where i want to be not the start menu my content browser so we have a pause menu a status menu and open this guy up. Cool. Um, you know what? I just need to make a quick note on a post it for after the stream. I just remembered something I have to do later in my day. Okay, sorry about that. And hopefully my music is now being captured for the stream. Um, I am going to play the stock music that's supposed to be A-OK -okay for YouTube. Okay, close that. Okay, let's 
so the status menu looks like this. Um, it's a little, uh, I don't want to say all over the place, but it's a little bit, um, yeah, okay, that's working fine. Yeah, so, I was in the middle of converting it a little bit to make it a bit more dynamic. Um, this area, the open space beside the HP and SP, um, that's supposed to be where the AP goes. Um, just in the middle of like design changes, but that doesn't really affect our ability to uh, set up a controllable menu. Actually, one thing I want to do across all menus is um, we want to go to our main menu. And now lights our currency. We want to display that. in the chat's asking me what I am working on. Oh uh, yes, like I was saying, we want to display malite, but time is not really a, a measure we want to display for the player. What's more, uh, more in line what we want to display is actually, we can see here um, on this photo, um, we want to display two values, the day count and the phase of, of the day. This is from a deeper menu inside the pause menu. My audio levels are okay. Jeez. Uh, okay. So let us. Um, we want to get this, this value, the day and phase. Right now, money is being handled by this function, let's see. Uh, yep, it's just the player's, the player's money. Um... Okay, the next thing we want to do is, this is probably going to be tracked on our game mode blueprint, which I believe is, yeah, here. Um... Interesting. Um, yep. So this is just handling our mission, our mission tracking, and these variables in here are actually for our. What does get spawn transform? Hmm. I want to say. Uh, I have to review. Excuse me. I have to review what this is later. Um, but let's just make a integer for 
uh, day count, something like that. Tracks the number of days that has been played. And kind of simply, we should be able to just uh, change this to say day. Um, and we'll update this. And let us find um, we don't need a function because that's not a value that's going to change. We just need to check what day it is once. And we can probably check on event construct. So let us create a variable for that. It should be text. Um, day text or day count text. Convert it to a text. Um, I want to set that value pass to game mode yeah project grand vault game mode game mode and we want to use that integer get day count and that's kind of all the logic that we need to drive to drive that uh, that info. Um, yep, and it proceeds along just fine. Um, let's compile and then set this reference. Um, let's that default text we can set it to X. Um, Uh, copy paste and this would say phase um let's block a phase yeah we'll we'll figure out the phase later that's probably gonna be driven by an enumerator um, I have to check the design documents to see what the details around that would be. But we can apply our day count text here. Um, and in the game mode, we can set the day count default to uh, one, you know, and then when we go into the game we should get that data just fine yeah see day one how neat is that um these aren't uh ideal either but let's let's continue on to actually making the status menu functional kind of got sidetracked there a little bit um mainly because I wanted to set up this thing here um, because I want to cut this out and actually paste it into this location in the vertical box. Um, however, we'll get rid of the previous and uh, we'll move up this box up. Um, yeah, there's no binding for it. We'll have to redo that, but that's not an issue. That ain't no big deal. Okay. So status. Um, actually, real quick. 
let's set the delay on uh, character select to half that time. Because I feel one second might be a bit too long. Okay, so right now we can go into the status menu. Um, we can't really navigate through anything, but we're able to, you know, exit out of our menu, close it. We have full functionality. But we want to be able to tab over as well. So... Originally, um, this was all driven by mouse events, and you could hover and get all this data. Um, so if you hover on your attack, it would give you a little description up here of what it would be. Same for almost every element. Um, the the toggling functionality of the menu was handled by clicking this giant button here, which isn't needed anymore. And it also isn't, um, it's kind of ugly, but it made sense when the menu was only driven by a mouse, uh, mouse event. But we should be able to uh, simply drive this by, let's see, let's see what's happening here. Switch status screen. Thank you, past self. Oh, hey, Julio. We are working on uh, setting up the status menu with the gamepad. Um, earlier, I demonstrated the new player select uh, screen. It's not that much changed from the original one. Um, it's a little fancier, uh, but it works with the gamepad, which is really cool. Um, I have a question for you, Julio. Do you hear any music in the stream? Or is it just silence and my voice? Basically, when we click that button, we drive this event. Um, this doesn't seem too, too difficult to convert. Um, oh, Julio, he can only hear my voice. Well, that means OBS is still not tracking um, any sort of audio that I am playing in terms of music, I think. I think. At least not off my computer. Um, so I wonder if I can play some dope video game OSTs. I mean, if you guys aren't going to hear it. I mean, if YouTube can't hear it, I can't get in trouble, and then I can at least have some common music. All right, let me know... Let me know if any more music comes in, Julio. Okay. Because the YouTube music, it's, it's okay, but it's not... Like, I don't love it. Whoops. We want an event tick. And we got one. What are we handling with event tick? Oh, exit menu. I see. I see. Okay, let's move this back into our our desired workspace. Um, something else I want to check for is uh, what do we call it here? Um, something like this. Let's call it 
Uh, toggle. Toggle input. Wait, you hear it now? Yeah, YouTube will, like, mute the audio, so, um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, do a stream, and I'm talking about, uh, processes, and how things are done, and then YouTube mutes the whole audio, and then I'm like, oh, well, that's, now you're just watching some silence, some silent working, it's, just, it's no good for anybody. You know, and I get it. I get it, like, you know, that content is owned by somebody, and if I'm streaming and, you know, gaining value, you know, not that I am right now, we're just too small scale, but, like, if you have millions of viewers or thousands of viewers, I mean, that's a lot of value you're getting from your stream, and I get it that they don't want you to stream their stuff without their permission. It's part of the rules, you gotta play... Gotta play the game by the rules, you know? Okay. Um, so, what do we want to toggle? Um, let's... Oh, gosh. Let's expand this node. Can I kind of copy this. I copied it from the previous uh, menu. And we probably don't need all this stuff. We need input key down with this face button bottom. Yeah, so that's like your confirm, which we don't really need, I think, on this menu. But we'll we'll leave it here for now. We'll get rid of it once we're done working. Um Actually we will need that, I think. Because we're gonna handle the help menu a little differently, I think. Um I recall how Final Fantasy XV handled theirs, and I, I thought it was really uh, a nice, simple way to handle uh, what all the stats do and mean. Okay, so is input key down. This is for navigation. But what we're looking for is basically a shoulder button. Um, right. Oh, shoot. Excuse me. We should duplicate these. And we're looking for like a right trigger. Or oh, right shoulder. Like R1. Right shoulder. And we let's grab an or. Um this was all done on event tick before. Basically checking what components were hovering and providing the help text for it. Um, I'm going to keep it for now because we're going to want uh, that text. Or at least a reference to. Okay. So, um, and you know what, we can also use... So right shoulder can toggle the menu or the... Uh, D key, I guess. There's no shoulder buttons on a keyboard. So, I'm going to have to go ahead and say probably best to use the D key. Play our Project Grand Vault music in a loop. Yeah, we definitely could. Um, you know, um, okay. So, Julio, let me know if you hear this. I'm gonna play this new Project Grand Vault music. Um, is it audible in stream? Let me know. Um, I don't think we need more pins. Remove those two. Okay, so once those are true, we should be able to just toggle this flip-flop. Um, we'll put a delay here. Um, Alright, so every trigger of the delay will protect us. Um, 
Um, and you know what, let's just plug it in like this and see what we get. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. It's working as intended. Ah, so it does work. We can toggle our menu. Um, there's a slight lag with my input. That's because of the long time on that delay. Um... But, um, it's kind of working as intended. Neat. That is pretty neat. Okay. Um, let's reduce that by half. Um, on click toggle button. I don't think we need that. And possibly we can get rid of the button itself. How about that? Cleaning up our menu. Get rid of that eyesore. Okay. Wait, what? Why well, does it say neutral at the top? That's not right. That's not right at all. It should stay status. Get temp text physical condition. What is this? Oh lord. Um, yeah, we don't want that there. We want that here. Um, we don't want it. Remove that binding. Um, selection text, that's fine. Um, what we do want is... Okay, this is a pretty dense, pretty dense widget. So if we get rid of the main stats and the equipment, um, Physical stats, yeah. Condition goes here. This is where we want that binding. That'll be more accurate. Whoops. Didn't mean to punch. Yeah, condition neutral, neato. Um, Um, status status type or section text I guess section text okay um One thing we do want to do we definitely do want to so this menu is not really something you interact with like a uh, inventory but it's more like let me see what my current you know, XP is, or my current uh, attack, or 
you know, endurance, like, what, what are, what's my status, you know, um, you know, do I have any, like, status ailments, or if I want to check the physical condition in detail, you can check that out, too, um, so it's more of a, it's more informative than interactive, but because it's so informative, um, we had a lot of, uh, on hover events here, things like, you know, is the clothing, so if you hover on, you know, text block clothing, it would say in the tooltip that currently equipped clothing or, you know, um, current base attack value, depending on which of these elements you're hovering on, right? But because we don't have uh, that option on a gamepad, we need to find out, you know, how. what if a player wants to know what all these things mean? How are they going to find out? Um... Final Fantasy XV handled this in a really elegant way, I thought. Um, they sort of, um, instead of having a you know an active descriptor up here, they sort of just had. I want to say as part of the. The footer, they had a, you know, just like you have your, you know, back and forward buttons of the menu, you, they had a button that said, like, uh, help or uh, info, and you'd press that, and that dialog box would come up, and then you could actually see what, you know, all these different, um, you know, attributes do, like we have here. Um, and in a way, it's kind of, it has its pros and its cons comparatively, but, I mean, it's that kind of information is something that we obviously can't neglect if you're using a gamepad. So we want to set that up. Um, we have a size box here for um, really time and I'm not running sure um, border. Shoot, I'll just call this. Um, my life and day. Okay. Um, inside of that, we have a size box, vertical box. Let's collapse those. Okay, so now we have a size box commands. Um, we definitely want to be working in here. So let us take a look. Wait, why is a size box not even on? That's bizarre. You should absolutely want the size box on if it's there. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, make it a bit more space. Okay. Inside the size box, we have our vertical containers. Let's see how this is set up. Um, we basically have some really janky setup that I set up earlier. Um, <clears throat> so, 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 what do we want to do here? Um, technically, technically, um, this may doesn't have anything to confirm firm um, I mean you can go back or you can toggle so um, there's one little box let's call this uh, commands and let's see uh, info right we want to see that info, or we want to uh, back out of the menu, and you know what, there's actually going to be a third one. Uh, let's copy and paste this in there. Let's move that over. Okay. So, this was done with spacers before, and I want to say it should have probably have been done with padding because it would just be easier to um, 
it's like what's this spacer's length? 64 approximately. So I just dump 64 there. Um, right? Like 100? Sure. See? It's way easier. And then you have less elements too. Um, and if we need more space, we just go to our size box and bump that out. Okay. Um, and I want I want to say um, this this shouldn't be all in one text block. That's kind of uh, that kind of feels bad. Um, let's put info. Um, just for now, we'll just use it like this. Uh, copy, paste. These should all be separate elements. Now, you know, first we need to wrap this with a horizontal box. Wait, what? Not replace. Wrap with a horizontal box. That's better. Okay. And now we can copy and paste these other commands in there. Um, I should be using the hotkeys. Okay. Now then, let's pad this out. 64. And this one, wait, it should be like 100 and 100, right? Um, something along those lines. Um, this is going to be... These are probably context sensitive, depending on if you're using gamepad or controller. So we'll say um, um, info command text, and they're probably all going to be variables. Uh, toggle command. Excuse me, I'm going to get rid of that, it's a bit redundant. Um, and down here, we'll have our uh, return command text. Okay, um, we probably want to call this return. It's a bit cut off, but we'll fix it. Uh, and this will say toggle. Oh Jesus, okay. Um, let's reduce this to like 50. And grab our size box. Yeah, just make sure everything's within view. Uh, temporarily, this is going to say our r1 slash l1 oh my gosh the importance of caps and ordering things like logically l1 slash r1 and return will be our circle button and yeah at least now it kind of displays properly um, so this input has already been set up. We can use the circle button to return back to the previous menu. Um, right now, we still have need to decide or define a condition to make it work with L1 or R1 to toggle the stats. Um, I would like to incorporate, you know, some sort of visual cue as well as to if you can proceed uh, left or right, um, probably up in the, the top here. But first, let's set up that toggling.
Okay. So, do we have a variable to identify? Uh, we don't. How odd. How odd. Um, physicality, section. We want like a barrier. Uh, excuse me. We want like a Boolean or an integer. We could even use an enumerator, but... Excuse me. I don't want to create an enumerator just for one one widget. Um, so I think we'll just use a boolean. Um, is main status. And by default, this should be true. <laughs> and I think it's going to be pretty simple, actually. Just make some space. So. Is... Are we on main status? If true, um, and these can actually route right in. Yeah, if we're on main status, we want to check for uh, basically. I'll make some notes. Write input. If false, we look for the left inputs. And we're just sort of taking advantage of that toggle setup we had previously. Um, the left input would be left shoulder, and it would be the A key. Let's scroll down and get that guy. Nice. Now then, we should, let's jump in the game here. So, status, okay, so, forgot one crucial step, um, the one crucial step is, as soon as we execute the switch to the physical menu, we got to set this to set this to false because now we're not on the main status. And we set it back to true over here. Basically, once we get into the physical status, we turn that false and then we begin checking for our left input. Um, okay, right, okay, so now hitting the right input doesn't work, but if I hit left, ah, we switch back. How ideal. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. Um, instead of the retriggerable delay, let's make it instant, but we'll set a lock here. Um, and I think this will work. Um, let's quickly test it. Basically, um, basically by checking the opposite, we should be able to. Um, Hold on, hold on. What do we want to do here? <laughs> Actually, it might be able to work as is because we're not going higher or lower beyond those two. It's either one way or not, like one direction and only one one index over. Yep. Beautiful. We can exit out. We should be able to cheat and give us some experience here. All right. Jump back into status. Yeah, we have 100 experience. We can see that now. Uh, neat. And if we apply that... Yeah, zero experience in our, in our, on our character, why it's been applied. Um, whoops. Um, 50 experience. Neato. Okay. And our stats increased. Yeah, so we got some, some minimal functionality here. Oh, just got a message. It's not an emergency, but I just, I should, it's quick, I should answer it. Okay, okay, so... Let's clean this up a little bit now. How to handle the information text. We do have a notify widget. Um, that's under interactions. And it's a simple, simple notify. Basically, um, we can populate this with text. Um, so what I want to do is... I think there's an intro. There's an intro for it. It sort of, um, yeah, it comes up. Cool. Um, so what we want to do is when the player hits uh, the X or confirm for, you know, to get info, we want to spawn that and populate it with the information they need, allowing them to, you know, get an understanding of all this junk. Um, Okay, let's see here. Um, well, simply, uh, let's move this up, sort of make things a bit more, uh, a bit more neat. Okay. Um, yeah, we can probably 
was on hovered. Yeah, we don't even have that button anymore. Get out of here. Um, uh, we might need that, maybe. Um, switches, status screen. Let's just plug. Yeah, keep this sort of neat. Uh, we got comments and comments. It's inception. Okay. Um, we want to do a third check here. A third check for the the X key or the you know the confirm key. Um, I think we can use these two. This isn't a toggle input, it's going to be our info input, I guess. For lack of a better term. Um, and we're going to plug those two here. Okay. Um, okay, so... This is going to have to do different things. Basically, we want to, um, we're going to have to, inc uh, you know, increase the complexity of this. It's very simple. You'll see it. We want to be able to add pages to this if we want them. Um, now, here, we're going to want our input to either, you know, if no uh, notifications on screen, we have to spawn the notification. And if they're is a notification on screen and we want to be able to advance which page of the information there is because not all the help text is going to fit on this one single line of text um, let's close the game mode we don't need that and let's let's do a save all real quick but anyways let's take it one step at a time it's the easiest way to figure things out when we're working through programming um, we want to, yeah, let's set up a short delay again. Um, and we want to create widgets. Um, owning player. Uh, get player controller, I guess. Or get owning player? What does that even mean? Self? Interesting. This event is for only cosmetic non-gameplay actions. Target is user widget. Gets player controller associated with this UI. Hey, okay, that's fine. Um, and we want to get our notify. Not a mission or quest notify, just a simple notify. And we want to add to viewport. Cool. So now this this should work. Um, we may need to actually uh, increase the Z order. Um, we'll see though. We'll see what, if it's spawning behind it or because we already bring up. Okay, so yeah, once we're here, um, yeah, we can press X to get our notify. Um, we can also hold X and spawn an insane amount of them, which we don't want to do. Um, so we probably want a do once for spawning the widget. That depends how we want to handle it. There's so many different ways, actually, that I can think of to to prevent that. Um, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, the Z order, that's what I want to check. It seems to be fine at zero. I guess by default it'll just layer it on top of... Uh, whatever we're spawning it from, which is which is cool. So now, now that we can spawn our notify, let's create the ability to um, I guess make this more complex. Um, where to begin? We have our message text and our start and end animations. Super simple. 
like look at this um, So right off the bat, we probably want to, on construct, we do want to, we do want to do this. I think this will remain changed. No matter what, no matter what size or how many pages there are, we want to play our animation and play the, the notification sound, I think. But here, we probably want a branch. Um, and it would be something like, does it have multiple pages? And if it's false, we just want to end it. Or maybe does have or I guess is single page gosh okay if it's true I like to keep my lines uh, you know I hate crisscrossing uh, execution pins uh, okay and if it's not single page do we want to um, I think Let's put a reroute here for now. I do anything. Um. Uh, point one. Let's double that time, and let's put a retriggerable delay. Actually, so I don't, so we don't spawn an infinite amount of notifies when we hold down that input. Now. So once it's spawned, uh, let's create another, another uh, do we need this? Find references. This was used on here and over here. Okay, so we don't necessarily need this. Um, so let's reappropriate this and let's call it notify active is the notify active uh, let's compile so we can end the default um, yeah it should be false by default so if the notify is false but if notify active is false, we spawn it. Um, actually, this is a little backwards. A little bit backwards. Yeah, so if the notify is active is false, we... Uh, how can I... Okay, let's let's use a not, not not a not equal to a simple not a not boolean sort of flips the the input of what the boolean is looking for. So if it's not active, so if nothing's on screen, we want to create our widget. Um, we're going to need more space, but let's just keep it off comment for now. And if it's false, we want to... Here's what I'm thinking. We want to set our message text. So we're sort of... 
we're sort of advancing the text, right? Right? Does that make sense? I don't know. Um, and we'll play a cursor noise, like we just changed it. Um, so... Okay, page one. And then this could be, what, page two? Now let's test if this logic can work. Whoopsies. Probably should debug that, make it so it's foolproof. Right, so, notify page one. Um, silly me, silly me, okay. Um, as soon as we create this, we probably, um, we probably want to Set notify active to true. Because it is active. And then we should be able to come down here. Um, but on our notify, we need to edit this. And say it's false. It's not a single page. Right, so it's up and it's there forever. And look at that. We can change the text. Okay, so on our notify, we could just make this a Boolean. An and? No, just a. Sorry, not a Boolean. A promote to variable, and it'll make it a boolean by default. Uh, let's get rid of this. And call our boolean just that. Is single page. And I think, by default, that should be true. Well, where's our status menu up here? Okay. And we should be able to just is status set is a single page. And we'll set it false. Um, it should be I want to say it should be one of the first things we do, like immediately after creating the... Ah, let's make this nice and clean. Just the way I like it. Okay. Uh, one thing we do want to do, well, I think we can pull it right from the pause menu, is this kind of setup where we want to, you know, is it confirmed but impressed? Hmm, 
I swear I had like a limiter of some sort. Or am I imagining it? Button pressed goes down here. Well, how I would handle this would be to use a gate. Um, a gate that would start closed. And we would open that gate. Is that a player select? Um, yeah, we can't use a function. So... Um, I don't like this. Let's test if it works. Yeah, um, seems to work. Holding down the confirm button, got nothing. And then we got our notifier. If I don't hold it, we're good and free to move around. Open this up. Okay, so, seems like, um, Seems like the setup will work for us. However, however, we need to define a whole bunch of pages of text. Um, I want to say switch on int. Um, button select? Are we using this? No, we're not. I am reappropriating it. Um, page select. Sure. Yeah, let's call page index. Um, save and compile. Yeah, zero is fine, I guess. Um, Get rid of that default pin. And add this stuff. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to apply this here, and just for my own uh, ability to read the blueprint. We're going to do something like that.
Okay, I got page one, two, three, four. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's just name this right. Page zero. Um, this is sort of how we've been handling dialogue. I'm improving it a little bit. Um, um, but I am going to retouch how dialogue is being handled because I think it could be optimized. I made that a while ago, and while it's functional, it's a little in uh, like, for lack of a better term, it's not ergonomic to use from a programming perspective. Um, okay, there we go. Exe, yeah, page exe, got it. Zero, one, and so forth. So we can have. Let's just duplicate like four pages of dialogue. I'm not sure how many we would need. Uh, page three. And let's go with four. And it would do something a little like this. Um, I think they would all make a cool noise when they change and we would um, increment increment that integer to the next uh, size and we would absolutely have a retriggerable re delay here as well um, even if it's 0.05, I think that'll serve us well. Uh, okay. And then... To end the dialogue, we would have, well, simply, and dialogue, oh, excuse me, custom event, and we'd call this, and notify, and, you know, we'll call it from our blueprint oh i get it you want to be plugged in okay there you go and notify Uh, this has to go here, though. Starts at zero, right? We have to reset our page index, though. Whoops. Yep. Set to zero. Beautiful. So, let's jump in there. Status, um, yeah, let's get some info. Notify page one, two, three, beautiful. And if I press, there it goes. Oops. Yeah, we also want to turn this back off.
Oh man, butter fingers. I wonder if butter fingers is the appropriate term. I'm not really dropping anything. It's got sticky fingers. That's gross. Anyways, let's test this now. Okay. Um, I would prefer an exit sound. I feel like we I feel like I want one. Okay, let's go here. So we have our animate in sound. Let's find it in the content browser. Appear. Um, disappear. I don't know if you guys can hear that. My my sound is like being emitted. In game. Audio's coming in through my headphones. In the editor, it's coming out through my speakers. It's very weird. I'm not sure why that is. Probably because I changed my default device after Unreal is already open. Okay. Let's put this exit sound. So I don't want the exit sound when the notification is just one page. And we don't want two seconds either. Uh, something like this looks good to me. Um, Alright, let's give it a shot. That is cool. That's exactly what we want. Exactly what we want. Um, actually, I do want to add something here on false. Um, let's add one of these cool uh, blinker things. Under extra? No. Panel? Panel? Um, don't think so. Special effects. Whoa, we got background blur now? That's cool. Um, that must be new from 4... Um, okay. Yeah, these. These throbbers. Um, we want a normal throbber. And where do we want to put it? Probably in our overlay. Um... Yeah, we got a... a weird thing here. So let's let us <sighs> Can we increase the dots? Is that what this is for? Oh, that's so weird. It's almost like connecting to interface. Um, let's just keep it at three. I think three is good. It's associated with type. Um, okay. Uh, let's kick it out 15 up and 15 from the right. I think, I think how it is in the hierarchy should allow it to uh, fit with any size we put here. It should be expandable. And always remain in the bottom corner. Uh, we also want to make it invisible, since by default, this widget is not for multiple pages. But, here's where we go. We grab this guy, set visible, and set it true on the false. So it only appears when there are multiple pages. And actually, let's add a slight, slight delay. Yeah, 
and we'll set it back to hidden before putting it away. It should create a nice result. Uh, um, Throbber next page. Sure. <laughs> so we can open this. Oh, it is not sitting where I want it to at all. Okay. To set some behavior um, attributes. But, you know, um, the functionality is there. We, we sort of just need it to... Um, uh, something about this this margin um, I, hang on, I want to test this actually oh these numbers are all off three sure Um, let's make this way larger. So let's copy this and paste it. Right. Okay. This should allow us to get an idea regarding what the deal is. Whoa, okay. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We probably want to have some sort of word wrap setting. Um, yeah, and then... <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Okay. So, this notify... Yeah, auto wrap text, okay. Whoops. We have spawned inside of the earth. Yeah, yeah, well, city square is always a cool place to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't help us either. What a bunch of weird settings. Makes a stack like crazy. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's make this a little less extreme. Do -do -do. So, the behavior, I want to say there's a size to content on somewhere, somewhere where it shouldn't be. Yeah, 
So look at the default size. And we size the and we're sizing to whatever. Whatever our text is. Let's increase this. Oops. Um, and the border, my gosh. What is the deal? Yeah, this is a bit weird because That's the setting we would use. Okay. Let's turn off size to content. And let's make this 200. Now, this space here. Yeah. That is probably why. And auto wrap that text, but we didn't specify where, and I think that's the issue. Right? Uh, maybe we need some text that's a bit more uh, sensical. I'm just gonna grab this default paragraph from my stream and uh, dump that in here. Oh, geez, okay. So, there it is, and it's auto-wrapping. Um, wrap text at... Uh, let's reset that. Let's, let's read that. Okay. Whether text wraps onto new line when it exceeds this width has a value of zero or negative, no wrapping occurs. So that's like really severe wrapping. It's like one word. Um, and if it's zero. Okay, um, I guess, I guess this is good. I think, um, and maybe we don't want to make it bold since it is, uh, 
sort of like a message. Okay, let's see what's going on now. Um, looks... Looks okay. Okay, so I am going to quickly, as quick as possible, use the washroom. That coffee has worked its way through me rather quickly. I'll be right back. Exactly, Julio. Exactly. All right. I'm back. Wait, does diuretic mean, like, to take a dump? Or does it mean to, like, I don't know, I have to take a leak? Uh, but anyways, this is cool. We have kind of like a smarter, a smarter notification. Um, I think, I think we can begin populating this, uh, this stuff. So, you know what I'm going to have to do? I am going to have to make use of this handy snipping tool and just grab a reference of um, this. And I'll keep it off screen here with me. Okay, now then, I see that reference off screen because I have to recall, oh man, I'm a goof. This is obviously for physicality, this is for main status, I just didn't label it. Uh, we can just move this data into here but i guess the reference is still useful because i you know the order is kind of important it has to be logical so starting with the sort of um maybe i'll just move the editor window over here um basically um, how do i maximize this so that's not it's not what i wanted at all whatever 
Um, we want to deal with this area, the, the resources first, then status, then clothing. Um, so let's break this out, HP, horizontal box HP. So I'm just gonna group these and reorder them in the order of, you know, sort of what's logical. Um, after we do the level and experience, we do health points like HP and stamina, explain what those are. Uh, we then explain, um, I'll just leave a comment box here. Um, early energy, uh, slash Xenos power, because you don't have one for that. That's sort of a new addition to the menu, I think. Um, okay. Then we have our status, which is... Our attack and defense, right? Where would that be? Um, base attack value, current defense value, okay. Those would be next, and that sort of ties up our first block. Um, and below that we do Got resolve. Endurance. Um, clarity, where is that? That dexterity constitution and attack. And clothing, last. Okay, so this is the order we will try and explain all of these. Um, okay, so. Page one would be something like, and this can always be edited, but uh, LV defines the character's current level. EXP um, in blue is the amount of experience points that player has uh, acquired. EXP remaining? Is that what it's called? Let's quickly go over to the designer. Um, yeah, next level. The number beside Next level, is the amount of experience points required to 
reach the next level. Yeah, something like that. So let's see how like this block of text reads in our notifier. Um, I hope that's not too redundant. As long as we know it works. Um, let's move this over. Status. Ah, not bad. Um, one thing we do want to do is when this is up, when the notify is up, we don't want to be able to move this stuff around. Um, so before you know, we get, we continue with these details. Let's set up that, that kind of base uh, requirement restriction. Um, um, I think we can just apply that branch to gate it right here. Is notify active and uh, let's just make use of this. So, if it's not active, we can switch status screens. How about that? Um, in terms of exiting the menu, we probably want to do a similar check. Um, we can just use those two, though. We don't need them not. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll use it. We'll use it. Basically, if it's open, I think we should... Um, Terminate that notify. So let's create a custom event for that. Custom event. Terminate notify. Because often in games, sometimes you you click on that, and I think Final Fantasy is guilty of this. Final Fantasy 15, at least from what I can remember. You want that message, or you click on this message by accident, and now you're stuck reading through this block of text. Or maybe you only want to see the notification for the second page, and you learned what you wanted to know, and you, you want to exit. So we should allow that. Basically, if it's open, we can terminate the notify. How neat is that? Okay. Uh, let's continue. So we did current level experience points. Um, looking at this, we should probably cover this next block now. Um, all right, so HP is your character's current, I guess you should capitalize that, health points. Okay, simple enough.
So this is a little interesting. Um, and what I mean by interesting is that um, on our so these are this section here is your custom resource for each character. Uh, Maya has water points. Vance has armor points. Now. Depending which one we want, we could easily, you know, like we've done this, I'll use this commonly, we can use a select. And depending which character is active, we would populate it to be what we need it to be. But, um, Actually, that's fine. I'm overthinking it. I am absolutely overthinking it. Oh, let's go get the active character. Oh, I can get. Don't I have a variable called active character on this reference to the active character? Mm. Active character is from PGV main. Maybe it's current current character. Oh, we haven't yet integrated it. How interesting. Okay, leave that for now. Uh, yesterday I made a new enumerator to define our active character. Previously I was using a kind of... Uh, it doesn't get set here. It gets set on the child. Basically, I was using a text for active character. Um, not, not ideal. Um, what I would rather do is, and let's probably open up both child uh, blueprints and make the change. Okay, that's why. So, let's grab Vance. And Maya's over here. Um, okay, let's change the name. Uh, active char for now. And we make a new variable. And we'll call it active character. And here's the upgrade. We have a numerator for this. And that's why it's so cool. The default will be a void. See, it's much better than having to type in the text of each character and make sure it matches and checking against the text. We should always check against that selection. Um, okay, so, yeah, let's grab this tooltip, move it over, whoops, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this music is actually one of the newer pieces from our composer. And you know what? It's actually like quite repeatable. I mean what I mean by that is it's not it doesn't it's not wearing thin on me anyways. And on the child characters, we have begin play. See? Set active character. And then we set it on the... Ugh, it's like not at all what we want to do. Um, 
basically we should active character so this is Maya's we should set that here right if it's her we do this and we do the same for Vance but obviously we set it as him Excuse me while I fail at typing. Okay. Should go back to third grade. Neat. So now, once that compiles, we actually have the functionality achieved for what we needed on our status menu but I want to clean up this uh, referencing as well because we want to convert that over so let's jump to our HUD um, let's move it over here just so I can look at everything at once yeah so right on construct we are So the main character creates our HUD, and then our children reference that HUD and say, hey, I'm Vance, or I'm Maya, and then that um, basically determines these colors. So let's find references just here. Beautiful. Okay. Um, let's kind of funny active character. We use our special enumerator. Let's compile. Grab it, and we want to switch on it. And sort of just like this, plug in our pins, and we should be good to go. At default, let's put it as our void slot. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, and we probably can delete this. It's only being used right here. All right, now once this compiles, the next thing we want to do is fix this. And that's exactly what we knew would happen. Because that bit, that does no longer exist. But... This does. Oh, excuse me. I want to set it. Set active character. And simply plug and play. Just like that. So. Let's compile Vance, and let's just clean up the same area on Maya's blueprint.
So, now, we're almost ready to continue where we left off, but just looking at this, I don't think anywhere else is uh, referencing this now. Oh, Jesus. Boy, was I wrong. Okay. Lock on conditions. Oh, this is like an in uh, temporary area. Um, still. Okay. Hope the stream is okay. Stream is continuing. Um, OBS had a slight hiccup. Hopefully, you guys didn't miss too much. Um, let's see, is it continuing, is the stream continuing, um, alrighty, let's plug these in. Oh, excuse me, that's backwards. Okay, and then we have our add to inventory. Well, really, we can make use of the same switch. Copy and paste it over here. Okay. Now then, let's compile. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's just confirm this, um, whoops. Attack, find your current base damage value. Uh, great output. That's a better descriptor. Defense. Defines your current base damage reduction value. Um. So I think we need two more pins. One for our um, sort of stat values. All is used to enhance health points. Oh, jeez, yeah, we're gonna need it. Um, okay. Uh, 
Clarity defines Xenos gauge recharge speed. To define <clears throat> so strength and dexterity are used in the combination to define the attack value. And This is a little boring in terms of content. I'm just sort of typing this in, but um, we'll, we'll get to more uh, programming with this shortly. I just want to punch in these values before I delete them and clean up the blueprint. Finds everything. And lastly, we would have clothing. Cool. So now we should be free to clean this up. And I'll we'll plug these in like so. Oh, we forgot about these guys. Okay, let's recompile. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Duh. Already having some cleanup from that exchange. So, active character. Let's get that variable from our main parent class. And basically, this is on our status switch screen. We're setting what <coughs> is visible based on which character is selected. Um, so we can use an equal to the exact same way, except we can specify now instead of using text, which is a bit clumsier. Cool. And let's grab the other one. Active character. 
and we're switching on name. So let's switch on interactive character. And that should be all for our conversion. Um, We will have to re rearrange this a little bit <laughs> just because we're going to be um, applying the character name and this sequence rather than before. I punch that in and put my down here. Save. And now let's play the game. All of these require updates from our active character because we changed that from a text reference to enumeration. So I'm going to, uh, probably going to end the stream shortly, but I'm just going to capture this to do afterwards. Uh, let's see here. All right, it should be fine to play. So, yep, that is working correctly. Ah, that's a bit, a bit tight. Interesting. Um, oh, how silly am I? circle button it does close the the notify but it also um, exits the menu which is not what we want not at all it's almost too effective um, I think this will solve solve the issue. And if we just reorder the delay. Um, let's make it re-triggerable. I'll put a point on five. That's fine. The other silly thing we didn't do was hook this up. So let's confirm. Status, what do we got? Everything is correct. It closes, it closes just fine. Um, can we close it early? Yep. So now, 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 now. The last step is, well, we know this is working. So we can say mission accomplished on this setup. The one thing we want to do before we launch our pages or anything like that 
Uh, we actually want to check is the are we in main status or not because we need to provide different help text depending on what side of the menu we're in. And that's why I set up the page execution here because we don't want to launch the wrong first page. We want it to kind of be dynamic. So I think we are probably fine to plug these in here. Yeah, and if this is the main status, true, we use this. If it's not, well, we're going pretty far away. Um, yeah, we can probably just, whoops. Honestly, we can duplicate this and this, bring that down here. All right, so false. Now we'll have a dynamic sort of message array, depending on whichever screen we're on. Yeah, these all have to uh, reference the same one, because it's all from that same widget. We're just changing what we display, which is kind of neat. So. Let's put up something like this. Info set by uh, Launch help.